Allison said, my name is Ashley Boyne Chuck, and I'm your nine line in the arthritis community as Arthritis Ashley. Today I'm going to tell you my juvenile arthritis story and how I've grown to overcome the hurdles that have come along with it. Growing up, I was into softball. I mean, really into softball. Lived, ate, slept, free softball. Thought I was going to go to college and play softball. Had I continued on that path and had I been healthy, I probably would have been good enough to do so too. So you can imagine my frustrations when, after games or practices, I would have more pain and soreness than all of my friends. It didn't make sense, and my parents took me to a couple of doctors who basically told my mom that I was suffering growing pains and that it was all in my head. I was basically written off as a hypochondriac making up illnesses for attention. Sadly, my grandma has rheumatoid arthritis too and recommended that I give her doctor a try. I think that we kept the idea on the back burner for a while, but it was definitely pushed me down the steps, and that I was later sent to have my injured ankle looked at, given crutches in an air cast at the hospital, and sent home. My ankle was never the same, and that really wasn't normal. At some point over the next year or two, the pain became too much to bear. I was an all-star pitcher and a cleanup batter on the first place teams, a true athlete and a true champion. However, at the same time, I was dealing with excruciating pain that no one seemed to understand. My parents thought, though, and my grandfather even told me later on that he could tell when I was on pain, standing on the pitcher's mound with tears in my eyes, yet still pushing through and refusing to give up. That became a metaphor for my life. No matter how much pain I'm in, I stay in the game. Even after setbacks, I don't quit. Some days I hit home runs, and some days I strike out. But I try never to bench myself. I try to be the champion that I was meant to be. That wasn't easy though. When around the age of 10 or so, I was diagnosed with juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. The terminology surrounding the illness may have changed since then, but the illness is sadly still the same. I was lucky enough to be on the cusp of some wonderful biologic treatments that would prevent further joint damage and deformities. But I wasn't lucky enough, like all of you, to have access to pediatric rheumatologists or programs for kids and teens with JA, at least not that we knew of at the time. My doctor did his best, though, and he's still my rheumatologist today. He's a wonderful doctor and a wonderful man who has become like family to me. That doesn't mean I liked going to him as a kid, though, and especially not as a teenager. I remember him teasing me about my funky blue nail polish on my toenails when he was examining me after my first knee surgery at age 12. Mind you, bright and bold nail polish colors and funky fingernail art wasn't the norm back then as it is today. Being a defiant tween, I huffed and puffed and rolled my eyes at his kind jabs, knowing now that he was only joking. But as much as I loved getting out of school early for a doctor's appointment, I mean really, who doesn't love getting out of school early? I hated the reason that I had to leave. I despised going to his doctor's office being the only person without gray hair in the waiting area. I didn't really understand why I had to deal with this, all the x-rays and the needle jabs and the doctor visits, when none of my friends had to. I didn't get why anyone at the rheumatologist's office looked like me. At age 30, I still sometimes feel like that today. There aren't many young women in the waiting room, there aren't many tattoos or neon running shoes, and there's still not much nail art. At age 30, my blue nail polish is still out of place because I still seem too young to have arthritis. But, everyone here knows that I'm not, and neither are any of you. I'm sure some of you don't remember a life before arthritis. And to be honest, neither do I. I bet many of you were diagnosed even younger than me, and I'm sure that you handled it better on some days than others. Me too. I completely get it. I'm not going to say that everything was rosy during school. People didn't like that I got special treatment if I needed to come in late or missed a day because of a flare. People thought I was lazy if I skipped gym class. Sometimes I got teased because of my limb or gossiped about because people thought I was faking it. And though I tried to play softball until I was 16, it just didn't work. I had to quit softball and cheerleading when I was a sophomore because my body just couldn't do it. Back then, too, I was encouraged to shy away from exercise, believe it or not, though I find today that it's one of the only things that keeps me 
out of a flare. But let me get back to the late 90s and early 2000s before I bring you up to speed today. I'm not going to say that it was easy to quit sports. I loved softball and cheerleading and really enjoyed basketball when I played it too. I didn't really let anyone know how devastated I was to not be a softball player anymore when I had identified as such for so long. I couldn't put into words how envious I was of the girls on my cheerleading squad who could do a toe touch and other jumps without any pain. I will never forget the feeling I felt when I saw and heard a group of boys that I thought were my friends mocking the way I walked. I won't lie and say that any of those things were easy, but as you will learn in life, there is always a silver lining. If any of you older JJ patients are fans of the book or the movie The Fault in Our Stars, you'll remember this quote, life isn't a wish-granting factory. It's not, so get used to that now. But that said, you can make your own wishes come true. And this is where the happier part of the story begins. I had to quit sports, yes, but I didn't have to quit living my life. I still had a lot of friends and a thriving social life. I was a good student and only stayed home from school when I absolutely had to. And if I had to go to school with a knee brace or an ace bandage on my wrist or crutches, I made sure that the rest of my outfit was absolutely fabulous. And I won best dress my senior year because of it. I also turned to writing, which was a passion of mine. I became editor-in-chief of my school's yearbook and the entertainment editor of my school newspaper. I career shadowed people in the music industry and took independent studies and apprenticeships in journalism, fashion design, and journalistic layout. I may not have discovered my love for writing, fashion, or music had arthritis not forced me to expand my interests beyond sports. I went on to college. I had more health issues there. I got an illness called Bell's palsy, unrelated to arthritis, that left half my face paralyzed. I didn't let it set me back. I had to take a semester off, but during this time, I went back into journaling and freelance writing. I also got my own dog, Lucy, who is one of the great loves of my life. Maybe I would never have gotten her or further cultivated my love for animals or gotten back in touch with my writing had my health not forced me to find that silver lining. I graduated from college after doing some awesome internships with KISS FM and an advertising agency. My Bell's palsy went away, but I still had JA. The great thing was, though, that J.A. didn't have me. It still doesn't. It was and is a huge part of my life and a large part of who I was and who I am, but not the defining factor. It didn't stop me from pursuing my dreams. My dreams look a little different than I thought they would, but I'm still living them and I'm as happy as can be. I've always felt called to do two things, to write and to help people. A post-college position with the Arthritis Foundation allowed me to do both. And although it has evolved and shifted and I'm no longer there full time, I'm still able to advocate and reach people through my blogging and social media work online as Arthritis Ashley. Yeah, it stinks to live with juvenile rheumatoid arthritis and the other illnesses I've since developed like lupus, children, and celiac disease. But there's always silver lining, as I said. Things tend to come full circle too. A couple examples before I go. I was a big fan of Lady Gaga, and I had the opportunity to go to her concert in February of 2011. I, believe it or not, had brain surgery for a condition not related to my arthritis, don't worry, and wasn't able to go to the show. I was pretty upset about this, but believe it or not, her one song, Born This Way, served as an inspiration and helped get me through. God doesn't make any mistakes, the song says, and I was born this way, arthritis and all, health problems and all. But, I'm on the right track, as she says in the song. Aside from Lady Gaga, another role model of mine who I've always admired is Oprah Winfrey. As luck would have it that April, just months later, I got a call that I was invited to the Oprah Winfrey show to sit in the audience after years of being on a waiting list. The producer allowed my mom and I to sit second row. Guess who one of Oprah's guests was? Lady Gaga. Guess what she sang? Born this way. It was amazing. Fast forward to that October. The night before World Arthritis Day, I had been in the hospital for some random inflammation in my arm. I remember being disappointed because I was missing a show on Oprah's network that I had wanted to be watching, and the hospital didn't get owned. I tweeted about it, thinking nothing of it. The next day, on World Arthritis Day of all days, Oprah Winfrey herself personally tweeted my Arthritis Ashley account, congratulating me on helping others like myself to emerge from pain. I will never forget that, and I know that Oprah did not know how much it meant to me. 
a dream of mine had always been to go to her show. But to go to her show and see one of my favorite musicians and then later be tweeted by Oprah about a cause so very dear to my heart, that, my friends, is called a dream come true. And you want to know what else? I'm not done dreaming. Arthritis may hold me back sometimes, but not all the time. That's silver lining. But some days, to be honest, I barely move. A few weeks ago, despite being a married, married woman living in my own home, I had to call my mom to help me with dinner, laundry, and my pets. It happens, so just don't let it ever break you. Yesterday, in contrast, I biked 16 miles with my husband. Yep, 16 miles and I have arthritis. You may not believe that I was able to do that, but it's true. However, there's always ups and downs. I've changed my treatment plans a gazillion times, and some days, months, weeks, and even years are better than others. But I always keep moving forward. People ask me how I do it, and this is my reply. Listen to your body, be positive, and make educated choices for yourself, or in many of your cases, make educated choices for your child. Not all drugs work for all people. Not all natural remedies work for all people. Some treatments work, some treatments <coughs> fail, and some treatments that you will do well on at one point in life will fail you at another point. It's a constant roller coaster, and that's something you have to be prepared for unless you're lucky enough to go into remission, which is something that I hope for all of you. If not, though, my advice is to try to keep as positive an attitude as possible. Find something that you love and do it. If you're not physically able to do it, adapt. Maybe you aren't able to play sports, but you make a great coach or a sports commentator. Maybe your arthritis will hold you back from having a regular office job, but maybe, like me, you can create a life you've dreamed of and work from a home office. These days, I work full-time for a marketing company, but I'm also a blogger and have recently completed my first novel, along with completing a postgraduate nutrition schooling course that has, helped, that has additionally allowed me to become a certified holistic health coach. So anything you want to do, do it. At least try. The worst that can happen is that it didn't work out, but you'll never have the regret of living with what, wondering what could have been if you tried. Maybe you'll start your own business or get a job with the Arthritis Foundation or advocate on Capitol Hill for arthritis causes as I did in 2012. Maybe you'll be able to climb mountains or be a professional dancer or chef or a triathlete like so many arthritis patients are. If you don't believe me, read Arthritis Today magazine. There are profile stories of these uplifting and inspiring people all the time. To me, they are inspirations, and that's one of my other pieces of advice. Stay inspired. Don't let this illness drag you down or make you bitter. Find joy in your life. Take pride in whatever it is that you do. Be happy for others. Be grateful. Keep an open heart. Don't be jealous or negative or identify yourself as only a patient or as a victim. Find who you are and love that person. Don't compare yourself to others. Comparison is a thief of joy. Everyone's fighting their own battles, and everyone has their own problems. Yours is arthritis. Theirs might be something else. Always remember that. And their something else might be something that you know nothing about. So be sure to educate them about your illness and spread awareness, but also forgive them if they don't fully understand. Remember, too, that arthritis is just a part of your story. It's not your whole story. Your real story is who you are at the core. Another fault in our stars quote that I like <coughs> is that pain demands to be felt. And that's the thing about pain, it does demand to be felt. So allow yourself to feel it. I'm not sugarcoating this illness or denying the fact that pain is difficult. But you can feel so much more than pain. You can be so much more than pain. You are more than your illnesses. You're stronger than your pain, and your life is more than just the life of an arthritis patient. This is a beautiful, beautiful life, so live it. Live it as best you can, where you are, with what you have, and just do what you can when you can. When we're done, I'd like you to take a second to write down a dream or goal you have for yourself or your child, big or small, that you would like to achieve within the next year, or that you would like your child to achieve within the next year, regardless of their arthritis. <laughs> Include your email address or your parent or guardian's email address. You can give them to me and I promise that I'll check with you a year from today to see if you've at least started on your journey to your dream. And don't let arthritis consume you or stand in the way of these dreams, please. You choose your thoughts, so choose positively and choose wisely. <coughs> After all, you have arthritis. It doesn't have you. So I ask this. Please don't bench yourself in the game of life. Be the champion that you were meant to be. 
Thank you.